Okay, hello everyone. Are you listening? You are hearing me? Well, perfect. So um, I start uh, and I open this uh, this webinar uh, to uh, and I start to welcome all of you. Uh, it's important that we could really discuss to, today about this UN interagency cluster on pro on productive capacity. And first of all, I would like to highlight the fact that this uh, this webinar is a pre-event of UNCTAD 15. And please allow me this side remark. Next, uh, in 10 days, we are exactly in 10 days, UNCTAD 15 will start as the Quadriennal Conference. It's not only an event for UNCTAD. It is related to our common activity on trade and productive capacity. And frankly, I ask you directly, uh, dear colleagues uh, in the resident coordinator, dear colleagues from different places of the UN system, please uh, um, use, uh, we need your participation. We need also your network in order to not only to give a success to UNCTAD, to give a success on trade and productive capacity and all those issues which are very close to our respective mandate. So I hope that you can also help us in order to inform about this conference and the importance that all of us and all our member states could participate to it. I close the bracket. Uh, in this event, we want to emphasize the importance of joining our forces for supporting uh, new development, uh, uh, and especially on country level. In the event today, we will focus on uh, SMEs. These enterprises we know uh, that very well are critical for the recovery from this crisis, and they are the backbone of our economies. So they have also he, uh, been hit hard, as often they have fewer means to weather a crisis and less access to credit to make it through a crisis. So our joint efforts are needed to support their recovery so that SMEs, economic contribution, creativity, potential are part of this new development path. So we have also stressed the importance of cooperation to combat uh, this crisis. And we, we, all of us, or some of us, we are participating to the task team uh, in the UN SDG. We are doing a lot since the beginning of the crisis to do more as on a coordinated way. And it's important this cluster is a good example on how we can effectively collaborate. So just to remind to those not knowing very well the cluster, the cluster is led by UNCTAD and is a mechanism involving 15 agencies with mandates on trade. It proposes uh, targeted joint programs, drawing on the unique expertise and comparative advantage of each of our agencies. Through careful and effective coordination, we offer programs with uh, low transaction cost for the RCOs, but also, of course, for the governments. It is exactly in the spirit of the UN reform. This cluster also supports and it is aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Corporation framework. And in this meeting, we will hear concrete examples of what we can collectively achieve. We will hear from Comoros and how the country is building its development paths. And I'm looking forward to giving soon the floor to Mr. Francois Batalingaya, the UN resident coordinator in Comoros. So we then will hear intervention from five agencies, which will outline how we can collectively respond to countries' needs in the context of the 2030 Agenda. The exchange will show us the value added uh, of the cluster in supporting recovery and long-term economic development and lessons that we can learn for our future program. So let me now introduce the speakers. As I said, Mr. Francois Batal Yengaya, UN Resident Coordinator in Comoros, Mr. Oil Yang Zhu, Assistant Secretary General in UNDP, Ms. Elizabeth uh, Beshdol, Deputy Director in FAO, Mr. Orishi Kuniyoshi, Deputy to the Director General in UNIDO, um, Ms. Mr. Ashish Shah, Director of the Division of Country Program in ITC, and Mr. Musi Umaru, Deputy Director General for Field Operation and Partnership in ILO. So we start, and uh, I now give the floor to uh, Mr. François Batalinganga, the resident coordinator of, of Comoros. You have the floor, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I hope you can hear me. Uh, 
Thank you, uh, Secretary General Isabel Durand, for this opportunity. Uh, my video is off unless they, unless it turned on. I, 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 so it's okay, that, that's not a problem. Th thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, again, uh, let's talk about what could the cluster on trade and productive capacity do what the post-COVID-19 social economic recovery of seeds like the Comoros. Um, again, when I talk about the cluster and the Comoros, let's bear in mind that most of the, the cluster members they are known resident agencies. So, so let's, let's, let's remember that. So despite its geostrategic location in the channel of Mozambique, the archipelago of the Comoros is a small island state far from the global markets. I hope you can hear me. Okay, great. So it has less than a million people with a, vib a vibrant diaspora, primarily in France and the city of Marseille. So it is estimated that over 300 uh, people in France are of Comorian origin. So let me say this, I I'm highlighting this diaspora, which nearly represent a third of the population of the Comoros, so that you, you understand the importance of uh, e-commerce e e and digital economy. As a matter of fact, it's surprising to me that it's not well developed. And, and the cluster, I see this as a window opportunity for the cluster. So the GDP for cap per capita is, is less than $1,500. Uh, and before the COVID-19 pandemic, 44% 45% of the people lived below the poverty line. You may wonder what has been the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the Comoros. Uh, uh, the good news is that unlike other countries, the Comoros did not have many cases of the COVID-19. Uh, only 4,109 cases declared as of yesterday with 147 deaths. However, like every other nation, the Comoros had a, an imp, the, the, the pandemic had an impact on every aspect of social life, economy, education, and health. Let me highlight some key indicators. One, the microeconomic indicators deteriorated. The GDP decreased from 2% in 2019 to 0 0.2 in 2020. The budget deficit worsened from negative 3.2 in 2019 to negative 10.1 in 2020. Two, uh, the economic actors, the economic partners, they were heavily affected. Most of the jobs in the tourism industry disappeared. The informal sector was heavily affected and small and medium enterprises, they are still unable to recover. The other thing is high inflation, a high inflation which is creating a social crisis. And the social crisis is, is taking a turn, a, a turn of a political dimension, is having a political dimension. And because of that high inflation, we have an increased uh, prices of basic staple foods. So 58 of the families have difficulty fulfilling their daily dietary requirements. So we have, because of the disruption of the global supply chain, we have uh, transportation delays, and that's why we have a shortage of basic commodities on the market. Um, there were times we didn't have even bread because of lack of flour. We had no chicken and, and so forth. Now, um, the UN, with other partners, designed and implemented a social economic response to the pandemic. Uh, we're able to divert some resources to respond to the urgent needs. However, I might say that the response has been primarily focused on the health sector. The social economic activities that have been implemented recently, uh, it's what I would call too little, too late. The good, the good news is that the government injected substantial resources to purchase vaccines, and that's why we have a very high uh, vaccination coverage rate 
of 19.7%. Another good news is that we signed a cooperation framework. We signed a new UN sustainable development cooperation framework with the government on the 26th of July in the presence of the head of states. And subsequently, three XCOM UN agencies, UNICEF, UNDP, and uh, UNFPA, they had their country program documents, which derived from the cooperation framework approved by the respective boards. So when you look at the cooperation framework, our vision is to have a unite, to be united in actions, of course, to have the most vulnerable at the center of everything we do, and more importantly, to support the government at the implement le plan Comor Emergent, what we call the PSAE, the emergence of the Comoros by 2030. The cooperation framework is articulated around the five Ps, planet, prosperity, people, peace, and of course, partnership, which is cross-cutting. I call the prosperity pillar as a, prosper as a pillar of convergence. It's a pillar of convergence because that's where we find all uh, the UN agencies, they have really positioned themselves to work on that prosperity pillar. So our theory of change is that by 2026, the Comorian population, and especially the most vulnerable, they enjoy shared prosperity, built on more competitive and inclusive economy, on renewed public-private partnership, and in perspective of sustainable economic growth focused on the sectors of the future, which are green, blue, and digital economy. Now, let's look at the SMEs. Of course, we want the small and medium enterprises to be the engine for economic growth post COVID-19. And let me give you five recommendations, or rather six recommendations, that I think the cluster could help us with as a country, as a Comoros. Uh, number one, a business environment conducive to environment. That, that's number one. So, so as, you, as you think of what you could do for the Comoros, think about that. It's not easy to do business in the Comoros. So you need, we need your help on this number one. Number two, access to financing and diversification of the economy. That's critical. Number three, human capital development. So it's, it's, it's critical that we have enough capacity. I think this is, this is nothing new to you. Number four, regional integration, and especially the competitiveness of the Comorian SMEs. Number five, support for business continuity, uh, particularly during the time of natural disasters. We are a nation prone to natural disasters. Unfortunately, uh, given the example of the, uh, the cyclone Kenneth, we're unprepared, we're unprepared to respond to disasters and also to be, make sure that we, are, we, are, we continue to do business. And number six, support the implementation of economic policies tailored towards market realities. Now, as we implement the cooperation framework, as a UNCT, as RCO, we really need the cluster. We need the cluster to work, to work with us and to provide a holistic package. And here's, the, here's how we could, help, we could work with us. Number one, we would like to see a strengthened interagency collaboration, not, not only at the global level, but also at the field level, at the country level. So we like to you working with us more holistically as a, you, as a group with us as the country level. Number two, establish and, strength, and, and, and strengthen synergies with other agencies working on this pillar of prosperity. So, I mean, besides the member of the clusters, we have like uh, the Regional Economic Commission, the IFAD, uh, the IOM, the UN Habitat, uh, the Capital Development Fund. So working with all of those who are working on, 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 the, on, uh, on this prosperity pillar to support us as, 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 as a UNCT. Number three, uh, we need you to be able to ac active participation in the governance of the cooperation framework and particularly the resource group. Why not chair one of the resource group or co-chair one of the resource group? 
So being a non-resident agency should not be a hindrance to your participation in the governance of the cooperation framework. Number four, strengthen collaboration and technical support to government non-resident uh, and non-resident agencies. That, that's very critical. And I think uh, being aware does not mean that you cannot really provide that technical support which is required. And lastly, innovative partnership. Innovative partnership with other agencies. Here I'm talking about joint, joint initiatives, joint projects, joint programs. I think we have started seeing some good initiatives with in, in the environment, good initiative targeting the youth, good initiative targeting gender. But again, I, I, I continue saying this, e-commerce, e digital economy is the way to go. So we, we want to make sure that you help us with green, blue, and of course, digital economy. If we could implement this recommendation, we believe that we'll be able to to fulfill our promise to the people of the Union of the Comoros. Let me stop here, Madam Secretary. I thank you very much. Thank you, Francois, uh, for this uh, very interesting uh, approach of the reality of Comoros, but also your recommendation on how we could do better and how we could do better together on the green, blue, and digital, which are the three elements of the, of the prosperity pillar. Also, thank you to really highlight the importance to collaborate between the resident and non-resident organization or agencies, because it's not because you are non-resident that you are not, of course, part of the family, not only the family, but the family doing and join the forces to, to help you on the ground. Uh, you, you are really facing the concrete issues on a daily basis. So thank you for that. And I just would like to add that when you, you mentioned the different aspects, business environment, access to financing, human capital, etc., one of them are the criteria of the productive capacity index that UNCTAD put in place. So I think that we are very, very close in our analysis. We have probably to do more and better, not only in analysis, but also in the way to work and to be more synergetic uh, between all of us. So thank you for that. And uh, without uh, transition, uh, I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Aoliang Su, the Assistant General Secretary General of UNDP, uh, because we know uh, how UNDP has an extensive experience in policy work. Mr. Aoliang Su, uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Isabel, Francois and fellow uh, panel members and uh, dear participants. I'm very pleased to participate in this discussion today and to say a few words you know, on behalf of NDP. Uh, and as we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic has dislocated uh, all aspects of life. It has laid bare the significant vulnerability of our current development model, which is at war with the nature and uh, leaving many behind. And the, mag uh, the magnitude of the shock, however, has also shown the breadth of our collective possibilities. Member states uh, have taken extraordinary measures to dampen the socio-economic impact of the crisis. Globally, 2.9 trillion US dollars have been invested since the start of the pandemic by our governments. Vaccines have been produced at record speed through science and determination. But unfortunately, we know the crisis is not over, in part because of, of our collective failure to effectively support those with less capability to respond. Uh, as of today, 60% of the population in high income countries has been best, best vaccinated, whereas collectively only 3% in low income countries has. And there are more statistics to illustrate this point. So, uh, you know, policymakers around the world needed to show courage, ambition, and solidarity to ensure a sustainable and inclusive recovery that leaves no country or person behind and gets us back on track to achieve the SDGs. The United Nations has worked alongside partners in governments and the communities to respond. Working together, the UN has directly supported close to 
two million workers in the informal and the formal sector, assisted more than 300,000 micro and SME uh, uh, enterprises, and uh, protected the livelihoods of 5.7 million people, to mention just a few examples based on the recent interagency survey. The case you know, of Com Com uh, Comoros, uh, as we have heard from the resident coordinator, is illustrative of the importance and the potential of the value of the UN development system in working together in support of our partner countries. The interagency cluster on trade and productive capacity is well placed to provide a joined up support to developing countries as they use the socio-economic fallout from COVID-19 as an opportunity to transform and build forward better. We will contribute alongside our sister agencies in the interagency cluster towards the structural transformation of the economy, improving the regulatory framework and the entrepreneurial ecosystem in the blue and the green economy where the young men and women will work in the future. We welcome UNCTAD's policy expertise and leadership on trade and investment and the tools and the best practices of agencies such as ILO, FAO, and UNIDO. We see great complementarity between NDP and the cluster agencies to help advance circular economy principles. We know decarbonized economy will realize the potential of renewable energies, enhance energy security, reduce vulnerability to external shocks, and adapt to climate change. All of this requires collaboration also in SDG financing, as our, our resident coordinators mentioned, including innovative financing mechanisms adapted to the needs of countries. So, dear colleagues, the UN is at its best when UN agencies work together. We fully agree. Mechanisms such as the interagency cluster and the complementary financing mechanisms are extremely uh, valuable in our ability to deliver more effective and sustainable results to partner countries. We are grateful for the continued support of development partners. Working together, we will tackle the complex and intersecting risks and vulnerabilities facing the world today. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Aul Yang, for this uh, global analysis on the importance of cooperation and uh, coming from UNDP. It's, so it's important because it's a big agency and I think that you know very well the situation and it's important that we could be uh, all on the same boat uh, uh, every time uh, in each action related to this cluster. So thank you for this, for that. And now uh, we will hear from uh, Ms. Elisabeth Bechdol, Deputy General uh, of uh, FAO. Um, to what, what is the FAO point of view regarding agricultural development and all the question of food security. So uh, Elisabeth, you have the floor. Thank you very much. And let me also add my sincere thanks to you, Isabel, to Francois, and to the other panelists um, and the attendees today for this very important discussion. And again, the invitation to contribute to the event, which I do believe is really at the heart of the 2030 agenda, as well as our new modus operandi propelled by the UN Development System repositioning. I think as has already already clearly been laid out to us, we do have a new way of looking at the road ahead of us, and we have a choice. We can either continue down what I would say is already a beaten path of pursuing individual objectives, or we can take on a new bold journey together, one that supports each other with our collective efforts and joint programming to achieve joint and impactful outcomes. The interagency cluster on trade and productive capacity demonstrates the great potential, we believe, of such an outstanding cooperation between UN agencies. And as we embark on the decade of action to deliver the the SDGs, the trade cluster is setting an example for effective joint programming. By pooling the best available expertise provided by the cluster 
communities and organizations, many of us here today, this interagency platform can deliver more integrated solutions based on better coordinated added value. And as mentioned by Francois, enhancing this interagency collaboration is especially crucial to ensure that small and medium-sized enterprises, the SMEs, are supported as they drive national growth and development. FAO's actions in the Comoros have been realigned uh, in light of the challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, which have definitely affected key value chains and more broadly women at the, at the, in the country level. We focus then on ensuring food security, strengthening the productive capacity of smallholders and fishers, and the export of agricultural products. The promotion of SMEs and women's empowerment, including access to and control of resources, are then both key objectives for us. And FAO also supports the improvement and reform of agricultural research, as well as helping to extend the national innovation system. This is fully in line with our mandate and also our new 10-year strategic framework focused on eradicating hunger and transforming agri-food systems to be more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable. And in fact, this new strategic framework is focused on the achievement of four distinct aspirations that we have identified to be better production, better nutrition, better environment, and a better life. And inclusive in these four betters are also a number of very important priority programmatic areas, which indeed do touch on the relevant green, blue, and digital economy needs of the future that have already been identified here. In these times of crisis, we need to keep an inclusive focus. And as I said earlier, ensure that we support female-led SMBs, and providing financial and technical support and helping them to connect to international markets are critical and uh, priority next steps. Small businesses the world over are oftentimes the hidden heroes of our agri-food systems. And this fortunately has been highlighted in the many months that have led to this Thursday's UN Food Systems Summit hosted by the Secretary General. These small businesses manage at least half of our food economies and have kept food on our plates throughout the entire COVID-19 pandemic. We need to work together to ensure that they remain at the heart of efforts to improve the future of food. So FAO2 stands ready to scale up its commitments and synergies with the trade clusters partner organizations. We look forward to translating today's statements into actions through a joint coordinated effort that can support more socioeconomic driven recovery in our new post pandemic world. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here and we look forward to the perspectives from the other partner agencies. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, to have uh, highlighted the fact that of course SMEs uh, are really at the core business for all issues related to agro-food system and in particularly particularly the, the SMEs led by women. They did a lot but during the, the lockdown in a lot of countries and sometimes it was really thanks to them that some things happened regarding the providing food uh, where it has to be done between the rural areas and the urban areas. So yes, frankly, that's... that's uh, uh, really expect from us a, big, a bigger engagement uh, for SMEs and especially SMEs uh, led by women in their own community. So thank you for that. Uh, and so now we will hear from Mr. Hiroshi Kuniyoshi, the deputy to the director general of UNIDO. Uh, you know that UNIDO makes an important contribution to the cluster on value chain development. So we are a little bit higher than the level of the SMEs, but SMEs are also part of the value chain and ensuring that uh, that also SMEs are part of the value chain, not only be part, but also have a benefit from the value chain, because that's probably the most important issue for them. So Mr. Kuniyoshi, 
uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind introduction. Um, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we at UNIDO remain positive that despite the continued impact of COVID-19, UN agencies can work together and focus on common challenges and opportunities to support countries to build back better. I would like to thank ANCTAD for convening this important meeting and providing us the occasion to show how UN coherence can become a reality. Special thanks also to the UN Resident Coordinator of Comoros for his initiative to steer UN agencies' contributions towards a common goal set out by the UN SDCF. The Resident Coordinator has highlighted several key challenges that Comoro faces. In the frame of inclusive and sustainable industrial development, UNIDO agrees that small and medium enterprises, development and competitiveness should be put at the center of the joint UN intervention to minimize the effects of COVID-19 and continue progress towards the SDGs. UNIDO has identified a support program for production, industrialization and free trade Apile Comoros, as a strategic framework for our contribution. UNIDO has now been mandated under funding from the European Union to assist the Union of the Comoros in strengthening the technical capacities and competitiveness of SME and the private sector to produce quality local products that can be sold locally, regionally, and internationally. The UNIDO component of Apile Comoros is currently under signature and will be implemented with a budget of 3.4 million euros for a period of four years. UNIDO will work in close co uh, coordination with the International Trade Center and the Enhanced Integrated Framework that designated by the Comoros and the EU as twin implementing partners. The objective of the UNIDO implemented component is to strengthen the entrepreneurship ecosystem in the country in line with our area of expertise, namely quality, industrialization and upgrading, improvement of manufacturing processes, standards, marketing and analysis, and facilitation of access to markets. Through direct support to existing companies, and enhancement of the technical capacities of the local support institutions and incubators. We will be able to increase the number of processing companies producing quality products in line with market demands and requirements. At the same time, we will ensure that new businesses can be coached and supported in a sustainable and professional way in the future to reinforce the emerging Comoros plan. Ultimately, we are confident that this will secure present and future employment and long-term income. Facilitated by the UN Resident Coordinator, UNIDO, ITC, and UNDP were able to evaluate how we could capitalize on previous experiences and how synergies among our different interventions could convert towards the objectives defined in the UN Cooperation Framework for the period 2022 to 2026. Through this pilot intervention in Comoros, we aim to improve the way we cooperate with other complementary sister agencies and widen the impact of our interventions on the ground. We believe that the results of this first joint intervention under the UN Interagency Cluster on trade and productive capacities will allow us to further develop and synchronize our common approaches between head headquarter levels. Based on these efforts, we will then upscale and reach out to other countries and regions. An integrated and well-coordinated intervention focused on the country post-COVID socioeconomic recovery will be the best way to demonstrate UN coherence and the enhanced impact on the ground. Through coordination and cooperation, I am certain that we can all achieve the sustainable development goals. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Kuniyoshi, for this uh, uh, insightful uh, apport of uh, Unido about how we can also work not only with SMEs but with the local institution uh, in order to develop quality products. That's also something which is key in order to develop the industrial possibility for SM uh, for SMEs to participate to the value chain and be really. Uh, um, highlighted as an important actor. So thank you for that. And next, I invite Mr. Ashish Shah, Director of the Division of Country Program in ITC, to speak about how, of course, they are working with SMEs, which is a core business of ITC. So mm -hmm. I give you the floor. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, Chair, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me first of all begin by highlighting that the ITC is a founding member of the Interagency Cluster on Trade and Productive Capacity. As an agency specialized in trade-related technical assistance, we have been working in close partnership with other members of the cluster in a large number of partner countries. ITC's expertise in enhancing the competitiveness of micro, small and medium-sized enterprises better known as MSMEs, and connecting them with international markets, buyers and investors adds unique value to the work of the cluster and complements the work done by the other agencies. At the same time, the collective intelligence of the cluster provides insights to ITC, which helps us to better address the needs and challenges of our partner countries. Today, we have been asked to focus on Comoros as an example of how the cluster works together to jointly have impact on the ground. And please allow me to share some information on our work in Comoros. Um, so perhaps just to say that Comoros has obviously been a very long-standing partner of ITC, and we firmly believe that the Building Back Better agenda has to keep MSMEs at the center of its efforts. So what are we doing there? Our activities cover a wide range of SME competitiveness focused activities, spanning from providing trade intelligence to technical training for small scale traders, to improving the export competitiveness of vanilla, ilang ilang and clove uh, sectors. We have also supported the organization of, co of cooperatives, of producers, traders and exporters. We are strengthening their capacities. We are equipping them with skills to market their products uh, internationally. Um, we have also had to generate commercial loans to cooperatives, which in the past have had difficulties in accessing finance. And I'm very happy that the UN resident coordinator, Francois, has spoken about access to finance as being uh, an important issue, which we need to overcome. Uh, in 2016, uh, ITC conducted a survey on non-tariff measures in collaboration with the Comorian Ministry of Economy, Investment and Energy. Based on the results, we have proposed solutions to address regulatory and procedural obstacles to trade, such as streamlining the tax system, strengthening certification and testing institutions, and improving information transparency. We are very pleased to note that some of these recommendations are now being implemented by the government in close collaboration with agencies of the cluster. And this is a very good example of how the different agencies of, agencies of the cluster can work together in a country like Comoros. Uh, ITC's ongoing UK trade partnerships program in Comoros is supporting capacity building of business support organizations and exporting enterprises, and we facilitate the creation of market linkages to help benefit from economic partnership agreements with the UK and the EU, including through e-commerce. And there again, Francois, uh, thank you for mentioning the potential of e-commerce for a country like Comoros, and particularly for SMEs in Comoros. So under this program, uh, the UK Partnerships Program, uh, we have uh, been able to um, get $2 million of loans approved uh, for participating companies and cooperatives, which I believe is no mean task uh, in a country uh, like the Comoros. We will also be supporting the development of the country's national quality policy during the last quarter uh, of this year. Now, uh, looking forward, as has just been mentioned uh, by the Deputy Director General uh, of UNIDO, 
uh, ITC is developing a new project in collaboration with UNIDO to support economic diversification and industrialization of the country uh, with support of the European Union. Uh, it focuses on facilitating public-private dialogue, improving quality management systems, and supporting the production of consumer goods to be sold in national, regional, and international markets. This project will eventually allow Comorian traders and producers to benefit from the free trade agreement with the European Union. This project, as you have already heard, has two implementing agencies, UNIDO and ITC, and um, both of us together will be working to improve the business environment and strengthen the capacity of Comorian institutions. In this particular project, ITC and UNIDO will be able to complement each other's work and provide more comprehensive support for the partners in the country. Again, a good example of, of how members of the cluster work together to deliver impact on the ground. Uh, we have heard today about the UNSDCF, and I just wanted to say that we have uh, been proactively engaging with the, our uh, agency uh, colleagues from the cluster uh, as far as the UNSDCF is concerned. We, have, uh, we are one of the signatories, one of the 14 signatories of the uh, UNSDCF 2022-2026. We are also contributing to the development of the first joint work plan under this new cooperation framework under the prosperity pillar. So under the leadership of the UNRC, Francois, uh, ITC will work with all the other agencies of the cluster to ensure coherence and impact of our work in line with, with the priorities set out by the country in the UNSTCF. The joint work plan will feed into the existing mechanisms for coordinating for coordination among UN agencies in the country to ensure greater efficiency and effectiveness of our work. I just want to say, um, Chair, I do believe that the lessons learned from this collective effort in Comoros will allow us to do similar work as part of the cluster in other countries. Uh, I just want to say, for instance, in Iraq, ITC is also a signatory of the UN SDCF, and we are working together with the FAO and the ILO to support economic governance, trade development, and job creation, again, with support from the European Union. Uh, this is, again, being uh, closely coordinated with the UN resident coordinator in Iraq. So in concluding, um, I just want to say that ensuring inclusive trade development, this is, this is an essential pillar to help partner countries achieve the SDGs. And with the increasing complexity of uh, trade, no single agency can address all the trade-related needs of a country. It is therefore important to underscore the importance of a cohesive cluster approach to ensure maximum development gains in the countries we work in. Despite some good examples, much work still needs to be done to ensure improved interagency collaboration. And I do believe that the cluster provides a good opportunity for us to work together. Uh, I would like to assure everyone of ITC's commitment to work alongside all the other agencies of the cluster to bring about sustainable growth in Comoros and, of course, beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ashish, for this very concrete uh, um, explanation on uh, ITC specificities, but also ITC capacity to collaborate, especially in the example in Comoros, but as you just said, beyond, because of course it has to be everywhere is possible where we are where we are working. And I fully agree on the fact that trade issue cannot be addressed by one of us, uh, especially the diversity of trade, digital transformation, but also all what is happening now with the regional integration and what could happen in the post-COVID period when it will happen. Uh, it's for sure something that we have to work together. So thank you for that. And last but not least, uh, I'd like to give the floor to uh, Moussa Umaru, the Deputy Director General for Field Operation and Partnership in ILO, because that's also, of, say, of course, something <laughs> which is important to take into consideration the question of employment and employment generation. That's really the specificity of ILO. So Moussa, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Deputy Secretary General, for giving me the floor, and thank you to the UNCTAD uh, for associating the ILO in this uh, very important discussion. Uh, dear resident coordinators, distinguished panelists, and uh, colleagues from the UN system, 
Uh, let me start by thanking the resident coordinator in Comoros for his intervention. Comoros is a least developed country that is facing the impact of the global COVID-19 crisis, as well as significant climate-related challenges. Trade, tourism, agriculture, and fishery represent the largest part of employment and are the main sources of livelihoods for its population. Uh, the current crisis is putting all these livelihoods at risk. <clears throat> like in many uh, developing countries, people may feel uh, they have to choose between preserving the fragile ecosystem and raising their living standards. We are now, if I may say, in the age of sustainable development, and we know that we can choose for having both uh, more uh, environmentally sustainable and better quality jobs. Uh, a just transition to a greener and more blue economy is possible. Comoros can achieve its objectives of economic diversification, increased resilience and more uh, productive jobs and decent work with coordinated partnerships and support. The ILO is an active player in the UN system and in the interagency cluster, and it is in the forefront in the joint efforts to create more and better jobs, as well as incomes for women and men, for the most vulnerable and for youth. Uh, in commerce, for instance, the ILO is currently undertaking, undertaking projects on the promotion of the blue economy and decent jobs creation, as well as leading the technical assistance to the country for defining and implementing policies for youth employment. And as you know, this is a high priority for the country. In Comoros, as in the most developing countries, much of employment in the key sectors and the population groups happens through small, uh, through micro, small, and major enterprises. However, MSMEs need financial, human, technological resources to support recovery and build back better in a more sustainable and resilient way. MSMEs can be enabled to be part of local, regional, and global value chains and to be more resilient in productive and more resilient and productive. In order to achieve this, we have to support the digital transformation of the MSMEs, skills development and upskilling of MSMEs, and also support collaboration between the government and social post partners to foster an inclusive enabling environment for sustainable enterprises. These are key areas of action for creating decent work and jobs that are more resilient. The cluster can provide an enormous value added by bringing together the most relevant capacities in the field and generate more partnership for the sustainable development. Thank you, dear colleagues, for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Musa, for for your contribution. And um, at this stage, we have heard a lot of your contribution and I will not repeat uh, what we share, all of us we share. The goal of this uh, productive capacity cluster, uh, the, the necessity to more and more collaborate and organize synergies between all of us. So the question is not the what, but the question is the how. How we will do that? How we will try to propose coherent packages adapted to the field, to the need of the government, and how we will avoid what we all of us know. It's of course something which is also related to not competition because we are not competitor, but we are of course uh, uh, friends and colleagues, but we are also busy with all issues, our partners, our donors, and sometimes it's something that is not helpful to really uh, concretize, to, to make more concrete this uh, collaboration. So I fully share what was said, 
And uh, before uh, open the floor to the to the, um, the participant, I just would like to ask to Raúl Javarez, who is our technical cooperation person in UNCTAD, just to show on behalf of UNCTAD not only the coordination aspect of the cluster that I ensure today, but also what UNCTAD could bring in this uh, cluster. Raúl, I give you briefly the, the floor. Where is Raul? Just a second. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Oh, great. Thank you. We are um, not seeing you, but we are we are hearing you. Okay, let me just check. Voila. Thank you very much, DSG. Um, I would like to just briefly compliment what you already laid out about what UNCTAD's co contribution uh, can be in the context of the interagency cluster. So um, UNCTAD's offer is, is very broad as it's, as it's uh, its mandate. And it has an important number of technical cooperation programs in, in fields as varied as trade and gender, competition and consumer protection policies, investment policy reviews, uh, trade facilitation, business facilitation, e-commerce and the digital economy, as well as uh, entrepreneurship and sustainable development. Um, and this is just to name a few. And let me just maybe mention that you will find a complete overview of UNCTAD's offer in the UNCTAD uh, toolbox, which is available on the UNCTAD website or by Googling uh, UNCTAD uh, toolbox. I would like to stress that all these programs can be part or have the potential to be part and have been part uh, um, in the past uh, of a wider cluster uh, offer uh, at the country level. But today we are looking at two concrete examples of how the cluster uh, can support governments and uh, both revolve around strengthening M MSMEs in times of crisis, namely the sustaining and strengthening the resilience of livelihoods through SMS M SMSE uh, participation in local, regional and global value chains, and also strengthening the resilience of uh, MSMEs through digital transformation, skills development and business environment improvements in the context of the Sustainable Development Goals. So in this context, UNCTAD has developed well-targeted technical assistance programs, including training uh, to build capacity for various stakeholders. For example, um, we promote uh, entrepreneurship through practical programs for small and medium-sized enterprises. And we support governments in formulating um, national entrepreneurship uh, strategies. And it also provides capacity building, for example, in business facilitation through the streamlining uh, of um, the creation of new uh, small enterprises. So these, these are just a few areas that, that I'm going to mention um, in which UNCTAD, uh, of course, in partnership with its cluster sister agencies, can support governments and other stakeholders in strengthening MSMEs and making them more resilient. And we very much look forward to engaging with the cluster in this endeavor. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, DSG, and back to you. Thank you, Raul. It was important also to highlight uh, the experience and the offer of uh, all of the, all of us. So I would now like to give the floor to a participant in order to comment, to recommend, to really react to what they heard about the functioning, but also the necessity of this cluster and how it could be helpful in the future. So I don't know who will, would like the floor. I've seen that uh, Cabo Verde, the resident coordinator of Cabo Verde, Pierre Bezis, could maybe ask the floor. Is he with us? No, it appeared that no. Hello, can you hear ah, me? Yes, 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 perfect. <laughs> Sorry, but I think I lost the connection there for a minute. So, no problem. 
Good morning. Thank you so much, uh, um, Madam Chair and Deputy Secretary General of UNCTAD for giving me, for giving me the floor uh, and to really congratulate UNCTAD for organizing this pre-event ahead of the 15 ministerial conference. Uh, just to say that um, it was really interesting and exciting to listen to all the speakers before and also to my colleague uh, Francois in Comoro. Uh, because we have very similar contacts between Comoro and Cabo Verde as a small island development states. And to say that um, the current crisis that all countries are facing with this pandemic has really shed a new light on key development issues and priorities for the 2030 agenda and the need to steer away from business as usual, rethink and upscale the UN assistance. Uh, joining forces is really an imperative to maintain relevance and credibility, but above all to deliver on the promise also of supporting member states uh, on delivering on the SDGs and, uh, and inclusive development. So this has been a wake up call uh, for more resilient uh, transformation work, for development work that spans across all sectors, anchored on more just, greener, more equitable and inclusive transitions, and also on quality data, evidence-based public policy uh, and innovation, including technolo technological transfer, transfer. So I would just really like to sincerely acknowledge the collaboration and support from UNCTAD uh, together with other non-resident agencies and resident agencies here in Cabo Verde uh, that are part of the cluster uh, for the last two years and notably critical support that has been given on strategic planning data, on analysis uh, related to strategic planning and exercises that have been critical for our response to COVID-19. Just to name a few, the SDG accelerators exercise that we've done together with more than 10 uh, agencies, funds and programs to help us define the future of the national next national development plan in Cabo Verde, the social economic impact assessment, the social economic response plan, the common country analysis and Lastly, the Voluntary National Review, where UNCTAD support and partnership, along with others, has been critical. Um, and uh, just uh, these are just a few examples to highlight how specialized agencies that may not be present in a country are so critical for the system and for the countries that we serve. As we are now embarking on our new cooperation framework in Cabo Verde 2023-2027, aligned also with the new national development cycle, we count on UNCTAD and on the interagency cluster to join forces with the UNCT here in country on joint analysis and hopefully joint cluster programs with tailored policy support on trade, blue economy, green and digital economy. If you allow me just to finalize two concrete suggestions where the cluster could really assist uh, UNCT and you know small island development states, in this case UNCT in Cabo Verde on this path. The first is on Cabo Verde efforts on access to finance that was also mentioned by my colleague Francois. This is a top priority for a small island development states and we need a stronger regional approach for the Atlantic, Indian Ocean and South China Sea. Cabo Verde is already leading for the region on the Secretariat of a joint effort on the definition of a multidimensional vulnerability index to recognize vulnerability as a criteria beyond GDP. But for this and to access finance, we need data. Data is critical if we want to ensure good evidence-based policy making to access climate finance, to develop Debt for environment swap schemes to set indicators for impact investors or buyers of blue or green bonds, for example. Yet our ability in Cabo Verde, as that of many African countries, to produce, for instance, climate data. has a role that 
could really assist us here along with other entities that are already working with us on this, such as UNECA, Economic Commission for Africa. Second and final, to support joint efforts on financial inclusion. If we want Africa to unleash the full potential of its SMEs to contribute to blue and green growth and create sustainable jobs in a context of climate adaptation, it is really a change in paradigm and that demands emergence of new business models, climate friendly business and strategic partnerships within and between countries with public and private stakeholders. As the UN, we have very good scattered policy expertise on these areas, be it in UNUNTAD, in FAO, in ILO, in UNDP, to name a few. But we need to be better at bringing them together in support of countries. So joining forces, leveraging all mandates of the agencies, funds and programs is really the only way forward to ensure system-wide coherence, integrated analysis, policy and finance, and ultimately to reinvigorate the importance of the United Nations and that of multilateralism. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, Anna, because you you really summarize very well um, the the challenges for all of us, and you highlight an important issue which was not highlighted until now is the question to, uh, the question of access to finance and debtness and all those aspects which are key if we would like really to support the countries. It will of course requires uh, an adapted uh, financial support and not only policy measure or recommendation. And it's why it's so important that we could work on that, uh, including the index on vulnerability. It's true, and Gabo Verde knows that very well, the question of graduation. And when you become graduated, what does it mean from one, one day for, to another? And you lose a lot, but you are not winning a lot. So all this question of graduation based on vulnerability or based on productive capacity index, something like that, is also something that we have to work on, even if it's uh, a global policy of the UN as such. Uh, so thank you for that uh, and count of course of all of us, uh, I can speak for UNCTAD, but uh, of course on, on behalf of the cluster to continue to give the support on these different, uh, different aspects. I don't know if somebody else would like to comment or make a remark. I've seen or heard that uh, uh, Switzerland and especially SECO would like to take the floor. I don't know if they are with us. Friends of Switzerland from Geneva, I, I assume. Hello. Hello. Ah, voilà. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Deputy Secretary General. Uh, thank you very much, Francois, in Comoros, and to, to all colleagues uh, to give me the floor and the opportunity to, to have a, a communication there. Um, so, as you know, you are not speaking on behalf of Swiss, huh? you are speaking on behalf of the EU in Comoros. Huh? EU. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry. As you know, uh, trade is a very important issue for EU. This is our DNA. Uh, we built on trade and this is a very important issue. And uh, uh, one of our priority activity here in Comoros. You know that Comoros just ratified the EPA agreement, uh, which is a free trade agreement with the European Union. And uh, we are supporting the, the EPA and uh, we are supporting trade development diversification, competitiveness, promotion of uh, private investment in, in the country in order to, to foster growth, economic growth and job creation. And to do that, uh, UN, UN agencies are a key partner for the EU in Comoros. So uh, I know that uh, colleagues already mentioned some of the action, but I want to, to summarize all of that. We work very closely with UNIDO, and industrialization uh, project and support to, to private companies. And we also work with ITC on the strengthening the public dialogue and uh, quality issue for, for companies to, to, to create uh, export opportunities. 
Uh, apart from that uh, important issues, we had some recent work with FAO, FAO and uh, food system, and because we want to, to support the uh, food system and transformation of agricultural products in, in the country. On a more uh, strategic or macroeconomic uh, way, we work with UNDP also on the macroeconomic issues and job creation. I have not mentioned ILO, but I will. <laughs> and I think ILO is probably a key partner for, for our strategy in the country to support uh, growth and, uh, and jobs creation. And I would say that decent job creation. So uh, just to, to summarize and to end my, my intervention, UN Agency are key partners. And I, I'm very happy of uh, cooperation in, in Comoros. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Pierre, for this contribution. Uh, and we know how EU is an important partner for all of us, uh, not only as a donor, but also as a really a contributor on the policies and uh, the way to develop a really sustainable cooperation um, with Comoros, but also beyond Comoros in a lot of countries where we are working. So uh, thank you for that. And we know that we can count on the EU for a lot of things which, are, which, which we have in common, uh, and we will continue to that. So I have also a request of Patrick Ladrache. Patrick, I give you the floor and could you present yourself? Where is Patrick? Here is Patrick, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. We are not seeing you, but we are hearing you. Ah, perfect. No, so you are with us. Perfect. Thank yes, you. Yes, so finally, Switzerland that you announced. Thank <laughs> you. I'm, I'm, I'm actually um, from SECO, the State Secretary for Economic Affairs in Switzerland, and uh, SECO is uh, is uh, doing um, economic uh, cooperation and development. So thank you, Isabel, uh, to give us the word. Thanks also to the UN Resident Coordinator of the Comores and the panelists for their uh, keynotes. Um, we are a donor, so it's now a donor perspective, and maybe two, three uh, messages uh, from our side. For us, uh, the, um, the UN uh, Interagency Cluster on Trade and Productive Capacities is an excellent uh, vehicle we, we, we utilize for being active in low development countries. SECO is more active in middle-income countries, but through UNCTAD as a lead agency and this cluster, we have the opportunity to access targeted countries even, which is in our strategic context and the countries we are involved with, uh, very important. So uh, countries we are active actually are uh, Tanzania, we have been, we have been in Laos, and we are currently in Myanmar active with the UN uh, Trade Cluster project with uh, actually four agencies uh, of these 15 agencies. Um, for us, um, it is a special case in Myanmar. You know that there is not only the COVID situation, there is also the, the military uh, coup, uh, situation since February this year. So for us working with uh, UN agencies that have a good standing in these countries is in such a vulnerable uh, situation, uh, very important. And we can really count on the expertise, on the contacts and uh, the, the solid way of working of these agencies. So that is um, an advantage in these specific circumstances. Still, the risk is uh, high to work in this context. Uh, we are not specialists in LDCs, but we can achieve still um, um, results. And we are active to say briefly on the project, we are active in, in value chains. That means the key partners are exactly the SMEs and the SMEs are in this area, we have, work, we have been working in tourism. You can imagine that's not very uh, simple at the moment as tourism is down for several reasons. And we have been active in horticulture uh, with SMEs 
in mango, in avocados and in ginger, where we try uh, to do backward linkages, that means to link the tourism with these horticulture sectors. So that's a brief insight maybe from donor perspective in how we can uh, use this nice uh, UN trade cluster in practice to support the countries in uh, trade and trade promotion in LDCs in our specific situation. Thank you very much, Isabel, and back to you. Thank you, Patrick, and uh, thank you for that, because it really shows very clearly that uh, it's a two-direction issue. And we, as cluster, we have probably to, well, to do better together, but also we offer to the donors, for instance, Switzerland, but also other potential donors, we offer to them a vehicle, which, is, which could be useful to really implement the policy that from the donor's country perspective. So I think that it's really something that we have to really work on both sides, donor sites and SCO on the country, but also the UN cluster in order to identify who are, which are the partners, which is the pro concrete project and how we could all of us or a, a number of us be together in order to really make this connection between the donors and the beneficiaries through the resident coordinator in the in the country, but also through uh, an alliance or a coalition between some of us on specific projects. So I think that it's really clo not closing, not closing the discussion, but closing the, the circle of this, the, the interest of this, uh, this cluster. And it shows also how flexible we have to be in order to adapt or offer to the needs of the country and also to the, 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 the policy or the political choice of the donors in order to really do something which is really useful uh, on the ground for the people, because finally that's, that's what we have to do. So thank you for that, Patrick, because it helped us to really uh, go further. There are maybe other remarks or contribution from the audience or participants who, who would like to say something. If yes, please uh, raise your hand. Ah, I see Isa Fanogo. Isa, I give you the floor. Yeah, merci, uh, Isabel. Uh, thanks a lot to all of you. I'm very sorry that I'm uh, joining quite late. I was running into uh, another meeting, so apologies if I didn't uh, follow everything. I'm the resident coordinator for Madagascar. I had planned to join earlier. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it because I had a, a meeting with the Minister of Justice. But I just wanted to, uh, to really thank um, UNCTAD for initiating uh, this dialogue. I'm also very pleased that uh, UNCTAD just joins uh, the UN city in, uh, in Madagascar. So it's an opportunity for us to really tap into that expertise, to try and build uh, on the knowledge uh, that has been acquired and the initiatives that are being undertaken in other countries. So we very much look forward to uh, from Comoros, my friend Francois. I noticed that a couple of other interventions reflected on, uh, sorry, on Comoros. One is uh, what our colleague from the EU just mentioned. And I wanted to echo uh, that approach by saying that uh, in the context of the preparation of the EU 2127 uh, program, we are actually engaging the EU to explore ways of uh, creating some alliances around some of those issues that are dire to uh, the EU. In uh, the same vein, we are, I think we can uh, definitely uh, tap into the knowledge of the non-resident agencies, such as uh, uh, UNCTAD, as well as ITC, to improve uh, Madagascar's uh, global market uh, competitiveness, to work on issues such as e-commerce uh, capability, as well as uh, domestic taxation. The last bit that I just mentioned, if I recall correctly, uh, there were already some engagements 
between UNCTAD and uh, the government of Madagascar on, uh, uh, on taxation. And I think those are some of the things we can capitalize on and uh, in the context of uh, the severe impact of the COVID on uh, the tourism, the export sector in Madagascar, I think we can learn from uh, what is being done better elsewhere to try and help the government here. We might definitely, and I want to conclude on that, we might definitely learn from the engagement between the EU and the Comoros UN city so that we can uh, learn and uh, see how we can help the government here in Madagascar. Thank you very much. Over. Thank you, Issa. Uh, merci, Issa, pour cette contribution. It's true that uh, we have to do more and trying to really uh, help you through different lens or through different perspective to really answer to the question of the government and be sure that not only UNCTAD is willing to support Madagascar, but uh, we, we will try to do our best in order to support in this very difficult period where, where you need as Brett this possibility to extend market to really uh, try to redevelop tourism, etc. So thank you for that. Uh, I see, I saw somebody uh, asking the floor. Uh, Tapan, Tapan Mishra, I give you the floor. Thank you, uh, Deputy Secretary General of UNCTAD Isabel. My name is Tapan Mishra. I'm the UN resident coordinator in Mongolia. And I'm very inspired by this uh, my, my initiative by my friend and colleague uh, um, uh, in, in engaging all the, uh, with the on trade with the UNCTAD, with the um, ITC. I just want to um, learn from this experience and how Mongolia, which is uh, currently, it's about 10.20 p.m. in the night. I just finished a SDG leadership lab at 9.30 <laughs> and I joined you a little late. But I just, I'm very inspired to hear uh, uh, our uh, uh, colleagues, including Hao Liang from UNDP, how we can leverage the potential of Mongolia, especially there's a huge trade potential on animal products and, and on uh, agro products and processing put together. We are trying bits and pieces but now with the food system summit, we are looking at a, a more holistic food systems uh, dimension that we can uh, working with FAO and uh, the, the colleagues here to leverage a huge potential. Mongolia has been stuck in its own rut of uh, exporting raw materials in terms of uh, mineral exports and extractive industry. And uh, uh, therefore the huge potential that Mongolia has with a small population of about 3 million and a livestock of over 67 million huge, uh, provides a huge opportunity for us. And I want to really work with uh, UNCTAD and ITC and all the other colleagues, uh, we can collectively, and I heard from Ashish Shah that it can't be trade, cannot be one, one agency uh, um, initiative. We have to work together. We are in the brink of a new uh, history creation with uh, 60 years of uh, Mongolia joining the UN. And we are also working on our uh, cooperation framework, having done a comprehensive CCA and uh, evaluation of the UNDAF, we are looking at the priorities moving forward. And trade is certainly one of the areas we want to leverage to move uh, Mongolia from its uh, uh, middle income uh, status to upper middle income, and the huge potential that is there for inclusive and sustainable development. So I look forward to collaborating with the uh, UNCTAD's leadership and ITC and other partners uh, in the UN system, including UNDP, uh, FAO and others to leverage this huge potential that uh, Mongolia has. Thank you, Deputy Secretary General. And I want to thank my friend and colleague, Francois, uh, for uh, leading this from Comoros uh, and, and the other uh, uh, Musa and others who have chipped in. Thank you so much. Okay, so thank you, Tapan, and it's really a call huh, for, for common action between us on trade for Mongolia. So uh, I hope that it will be followed by some proposal or a proposal of activities, common activities. Um, I don't see uh, at this stage no other request for the floor. Is it the case? Ah, yes, Simona Marinescu. 
Thank you. The floor. Thank you so much, uh, Deputy Secretary General. And since my colleague Tapan mentioned the hour, I just want to say that it's 3.24 a.m. in Samoa. <laughs> and I'm very happy that I was able to join you all. So thank you so much for a very interesting session. I just wanted to, first of all, I would like to thank um, Angtad for the remarkable support offered to the Pacific where the staff was in my team for one year uh, in Samoa, Patrick Goodner, who has helped a lot on, on trade transparency and um, on, on actually allowing the PASAR plus the Pacific Agreement on closer economic cooperation uh, in the region to move forward. So helping countries to develop their uh, trade portals and understanding the roles of uh, transparent trade. and. We are at the time that the Pacific is preparing the new cooperation framework. So it's a new five year um, uh, blueprint of uh, engagement in the Pacific. At the time, the Pacific is down on its knees with massive economic uh, contraction um, due to the pandemic, to the lockdown. So we are still with no flights in the Pacific at all. So we would like to have an opportunity to um, get Onktad into the process of um, uh, country analysis, country comprehensive uh, assessment across the Pacific, and then build uh, the UN engagement around supporting uh, trade and, and export primarily um, uh, driven growth. There is huge untapped potential in the Pacific. I know I'm talking to experts, so I will not go into all the details, but overall what we want to have is your support at this time. I'm just going through consultations uh, on, on the CCA. So we've had um, earlier uh, yesterday, uh, long discussions with the business community, with the private sector. So remarkable ideas, incredible, um, uh, you know, dialogue around the gaps where uh, UNCTAD could be a very high support. So I'm happy to take this conversation on a bilateral basis. But again, a big thank you for, for your support. The government is organizing a Pastor Plus Secretariat to uh, uh, actually allow this partnership to, to move forward for the Pacific, for the benefit of the people in the Pacific. But without your support, our uh, cooperation framework is not going to draw on this potential. So we look forward to working together. Thank you. And if you want to deploy staff again, please do. <laughs> so we have, a, we have a huge UN house in, in Samoa that the government gave us at no cost. So we look forward to hosting you there at any time. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, uh, Simona, about uh, from from uh, Samoa, and uh, congratulations for your courage to be so late with us. Uh, it's true that it's easy for for a number of us uh, because it's more comfortable. It's uh, four o'clock in the afternoon, um, but thank you for that. And yes, uh, we we also heard you call uh, from Samoa point of view and how you need not only UNCTAD but also the cooperation with the with the, the framework of the cluster as such. So thank you to, to let us know that you are there and that you are also offer uh, an office <laughs> for, for maybe for the for staff. So we, we take note of that. Uh, other intervention or other remarks or question? Yazin Jean Roy. It's, uh, for thank, the bad pronunciation. thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. I just have a comment to share. A very illuminating discussion, especially about uh, promoting giant clusters and uh, supporting SMEs to and climate change, especially the data initiative. Uh, there is something as an econ. I'm I'm an economist with United Nations Development Program in Mongolia. And there is something I noticed uh, that countries are now working inwards. They are um, working more on import substitution policies due to pandemic and due to dif difficulties that they face uh, for trade. So there, uh, in my previous work with the government of Canada at uh, Canada Border Service Agency, we noticed that um, the WCO, World Custom Organization, has created a very beautiful, safe, framework. It's called SAFE framework. And if that framework is implemented, it allows you to uh, automate a lot of trade functions. And uh, I think it's a good, good opportunity right now to focus on these areas to promote trade. What are the things or steps that can be taken to promote trade, especially uh, in a pandemic environment? Thank you. 
Okay, so thank you, thank you for this um, uh, added value that you that you put in the debate. And I've seen because I see the the timing uh, is running. So I see here Sheikh Mohammed. Thank you, thank you, Secretary Durant. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Sheikh Mohammed Belal. I am speaking on behalf of my organization, Common Fund for Commodities. So we are based in Amsterdam. And we are a good time units now, 4.30. And uh, first of all, uh, we'd like to congratulate you for these very important discussions and also the series of publications that came out uh, from your office. Uh, one issue that really we would like to seek your help and from all of our colleagues is the growing discussions of importance of technology uh, but when we, it comes to commodities, we find it very little coordination to really bring that technology to the level of the, of the farmer's field. So we'd like to see more discussions and more focused uh, discussions on technologies for commodities. Because if we cannot address this commodity dependency, uh, I think uh, the issue of uh, poverty alleviation shall remain a pipe dream. Number one. Number two, uh, there was, I saw some discussions on Madagascar. Just to give you an example, that uh, Madagascar is a country whose produces almost 70 to 85 percent of world's vanilla. Uh, but you know that it's an LDC, and the shape and form of this whole vanilla industry is, is still uh, in a very, very primitive shape. So I think it's a pity that whole development, uh, I think, infrastructure could not come uh, to the benefit of Madagascar to give them an industry who is the deserve. I can't, they, uh, for those of you who may not be aware that uh, now, uh, vanilla is world's uh, second uh, most pricey uh, uh, spice after saffron. But if you look into the Madagascar income from these things, it is not to be expected. So I just wanted to flag this, our more focused discussion for commodities and green technologies so that we can also bridge the divide between the developed and the developing world. Thank you, over to you, madam. Thank you, uh, Sheikh, for that. It's true that we just know in that closed the Commodities Forum, where we speak a lot about this question of relationship between commodities and technology and how we can use one to help the other and also to help the countries to transform that there's commodities in with the value added of transformation and not of course sell that uh, without enough benefit for the country so yes that's an issue which it's not the end of the process uh, definitely not and we have a lot to do in that so that's also maybe something which could inspire uh, some of us in order to try to go further uh, to support uh, your country but also beyond all the commodities countries which are facing the same kind of problem related to, to dependence of commodities. So uh, thank you to, to highlight that. So if there is no other uh, request, I will try to close here because it's uh, 4.30 and it was our timing. Um, I would like, first of all, to thank you and especially the panelists, the, the Francois, uh, who spoke the first in order to set the scene, but also all the, the partners of the, of the cluster it's true that the network or a cluster is alive when its members are actively engaged in discussion and in preparation of something concrete. Otherwise, it's nice on paper, it's fantastic, but at the end, which is the result. So it's why I just could really invite you to, and we will do that on UNCTAD, but we are, we are just a secretariat, we try to coordinate, but it's in addition to all our own. Uh, activities, so we are not able really to uh, to do all, but we will try really to 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 look which are the issues that we can really uh, relaunch uh, after COVID, uh, after 15, because you know that we have a conference, and I invite all the colleagues and especially the RCs to really involve their countries, partners, stakeholders, network in order to participate to the conference, because I think that that's also something which is. Uh, which is important for the mandate of UNCTAD, but also in order to really inspire all of us and try to let hear more vocally the voice of the South, which is really something which is important. Otherwise, in the context of today, we know how 
the geo geopolitical world is now uh, and how the multilateralism is important but also in danger so the the voice of the global south are to be heard on a very strong way that's also a mandate so please uh, uh, invite all your partners to participate uh, in UNTA in UNTA 15 and just after yes we have to look what we can do with this discussion in order to be uh, not only a nice cluster on paper but also a nice cluster on activities together two three four more uh, of the partners together on one or two specific issues for the needs of the country so i thank you uh, all of you uh, and I hope that, of course, we stay in contact permanently in order to increase our level of information, but also our level of uh, common activities. So thank you to all of you and uh, see you soon. Good night for those who will go to sleep uh, and have a good day for all the other. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Au revoir. Au revoir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye.